Welcome to our brief introduction to the 1954 movie, The Kane Mutiny. This film follows a group of Navy officers aboard the USS Kane during World War II. When their paranoid Captain Quig begins making questionable decisions, tension builds among the crew. Eventually, the officers question Quig's leadership, leading to a mutiny trial. Now, why should you keep watching? Well, there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts awaiting you. Which role did you enjoy the most? Was there a scene that stuck with you long after the credits rolled? We'd love to hear your thoughts and memories in the comments below. So, sit tight, grab your popcorn, and let's dive into the world of the K-Mutiny. Get ready for an adventure filled with drama and suspense. Don't forget to share your experiences with us. In the world of war films, the K-Mutiny is known for its deep dive into characters. While the movie takes some liberties from the original book, it really shines in showing us the different personalities. Fred McMurray's role as the smart but sneaky guy and Jose Fur's character as the prosecutor really stand out. The story about Quig's struggles as a leader and the mutiny that follows is gripping, even though it's not exactly like the book. Although many praise the film, some might wonder why it's rated so highly. The romantic subplot feels a bit forced and doesn't quite fit with the main story of the mutiny. Also, some people might question if Humphrey Bogart was too old for his role and if the mutiny was really justified. Still, the movie makes you think hard about leadership and responsibility when things get tough. Overall, the Kane mutiny might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it makes you ponder moral choices and how people interact in challenging situations. Whether you prefer the book or the movie, both give us a lot to think about when it comes to human behavior and dealing with authority in tough times. Columbia Pictures was determined to hire Humphrey Bogart for the lead role of Captain Quig, and he was enthusiastic about playing it. However, the studio was reluctant to pay him his usual top salary. Bogart felt slighted, expressing his frustration to his wife, Lauren Buckhall, stating that such situations never occurred with other leading actors like Gary Cooper or Cary Grant. He believed that the studio knew he desired the role so much that he would accept a lower salary to secure it, and he was proven right in the end. Jose Fur, a highly accomplished actor, won three Tony Awards, two for Best Actor in 1947 and 1952, and one for Best Director in 1952. He later directed the film adaptation of The Shrike in 1955, in which he also reprised his role. Ferrer is one of only nine actors to have won both a Tony and an Oscar for the same role on stage and film, joining the ranks of esteemed performers such as Yul Brynner, Rex Harrison, and Viola Davis. Engraved on a plaque in the officer's wardroom is a tribute to Commander Arthur Wingate Kane, who perished in a gun battle aboard the USS Jones, sinking the enemy submarine in the engagement. The plaque reads, USS Kane DMZ-18, this ship is named for Arthur Wingate Kane Commander, U.S. Navy, who died of wounds received in running gun battle between submarine and vessel he commanded, USS Jones. The submarine was sunk in the engagement. Jose Fur, recognized for his role in Serrano de Bergerac, is among 10 performers who have received both a Tony and an Oscar for the same role. Others on this list include Shirley Booth, Yul Brenner, Rex Harrison, Anne Bancroft, Paul Schofield, Jack Albertson, Joel Gray, and Viola Davis. The first counterpart, James Best, shared the screen with Audie Murphy in five films during their time at Universal Studios. The duo's friendship endured until Murphy's untimely death in 1971. In relation to the film, Notable events surrounding the cast members include Van Johnson's marriage to Eve Wynn shortly after her divorce from Keenan Wynn. Louis B. Mayer facilitated this union to dispel rumors about Johnson's sexuality, offering career concessions to Keenan in exchange. Lee Marvin, despite his dislike for The Dirty Dozen, preferred films like Hell in the Pacific and The Big Red One, reflecting his anti-war sentiments. James Best met his wife Dorothy Best on the set of The Dukes of Hazard, and they remained together for 29 years. These personal anecdotes offer insight into the lives of the actors involved in the Kane Mutiny, shedding light on their experiences beyond the screen. In the movie, Jose Ferrer broke his right hand before filming, seen with a cast briefly referenced by Lieutenant Steve Merrick. Major Hollywood studios initially avoided adapting Herman Wauk's bestseller due to anticipated resistance from the Department of Defense. Undeterred, independent producer Stanley Kramer acquired the rights and eventually gained approval for the screenplay. Laudekins, son of Ernest and Maudekins, hailed from Bedford, Indiana, where a memorial golf scramble funds scholarships for local students. Did you know that in a certain film from the 1950s, a well-known actor, Humphrey Bogart, appears roughly 26 minutes into the story? Surprisingly, another actor, Tom Tully, 
who received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor, shares a similar amount of screen time. There's a misconception about Bogart battling esophageal cancer during filming, but that's inaccurate. The movie was actually filmed in 1953, a couple of years before Bogart showed any symptoms of the disease. Another interesting tidbit is that Van Johnson, another actor in the ensemble, holds a notable record of appearing in four Oscar Best Picture nominees. These details offer a different perspective on the movie and its casting dynamics. It's fascinating to note how the film's production timeline dispels a common misconception about Bogart's health during its making. Jose Ferrer's role as the defense attorney was initially portrayed by Henry Fonda on stage. Ferrer played defense attorney A. Fortis to Fonda's Clarence Earl Gideon in Gideon's Trumpet. Humphrey Bogart, known for his roles as gangsters, portrayed two characters inspired by John Dillinger Duke Mentee in The Petrified Forest and Roy Earl in High Sierra. Michael Caine adopted his stage name from the Caine Mutiny. He was telephoning his agent in London's Leicester Square when he learned that another actor was already using his proposed name, Michael White. Looking up, he saw the film's poster nearby, leading him to choose Caine as his new name. And that's how Michael Caine got his iconic stage name. Fred McMurray, a member of the vaudeville group The California Collegians, transitioned from stage performances to Broadway in 1930. He played in the Review 3's a crowd alongside notable talents like Fred Allen, Clifton Webb, and singer Libby Holman, who delivered the torch song Something to Remember You by to Fred. The Collegians also featured in the Broadway musical Roberta, where Fred served as the understudy for the lead role. In 1954, the Kane Mutiny faced a unique fate at the Oscars. It became the only Best Picture nominee that year not to secure any Academy Awards, despite its recognition on the prestigious list. Producer Stanley Kramer and director Edward Dimitrick strategically cast Lee Marvin, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran from World War II, as one of the supporting sailors on the USS Kane. Marvin's dual expertise in both ships at sea and acting made him a valuable asset to the production. Acting as an unofficial technical advisor, Marvin sometimes criticized shots for their lack of authenticity, ensuring a realistic portrayal of naval life. A notable aspect of the film involves Todd Carnes, who shared the screen with his father, Roscoe Carnes, in the TV series Rocky King Detective for five years. Following this, Todd Carnes established his own theater near Guadalajara, Mexico, where he spent the last three decades of his career. Additionally, e.g., Marshall played a military prosecutor in both The Cane Mutiny and Town Without Pity, showcasing his versatility in similar roles. The Cane Mutiny stands out as one of Columbia Pictures' most successful films, grossing $8-$7 million during its initial release. This achievement solidified its place in cinematic history, 